I want to show you how you can make a grid of frames for images and then set up those frames so that when you bring in the images they scale themselves on the way in and this can really save you some time. Now I could make one frame, get it the size I want and then duplicate it but I want to show you how to make multiple frames all at once. So I'll choose my rectangle frame tool click and drag and here's the secret I don't let go. I still have my mouse button down. I can hit my up and down arrows to control number of rows. I just want two rows. I can use my left and right arrows to control the number of columns. And I just want three columns. So your up and down arrow keys on your keyboard control the number of rows. Your left and right arrows control the number of columns. And this is what I want so I'll finally let go of my mouse button. Now these frames aren't linked together, they're not grouped together in any way, it's just that they're all simultaneously selected. I'm going to switch back to my black arrow and then right click inside any one of them because I'm talking to all of them. Then I'll go to fitting and choose frame fitting options. So let's talk about the fitting options. Fit content to frame means that it might scale that disproportionately, so it's going to distort the picture. So for this, that's not the right thing. Fit content proportionally doesn't distort the picture, but it's going to shrink it down to fit, and it pretty much guarantees that I'm going to have empty parts in my frames. So what I want here is fill frame proportionally. I want it to scale the picture proportionally, and I want it to fill the frame wall to wall. I want it to pivot from the center, and if it's a reasonably cropped picture, this is what I want. Now crop amount that's how much image is left outside the frame. I kind of think of it like a rind outside the frame. And this gives you a little elbow room if you need to reposition. Now I like to type but I avoid it when I can. So remember this trick. If I click on the name of a field, click on its field label, I can type a value. So I'll type point .2 and then hit my tab key. The other way I can change the value in a field is by just clicking in it and I don't even have to have the contents of the field selected. And then I can just hit my up arrow for more, my down arrow for less. So I'm going to go for like 3 eighths of an inch. Here's the thing. It isn't going to be necessarily 3 eighths of an inch. It's going to be scaled just like the images. So on some of the frames it'll be more than 3 eighths of an inch. Some of the frames it'll be less than 3 eighths of an inch. But putting some number in here ensures that you have a little bit of leftover image so that you can reposition. So I'll click OK and then I'll click an empty space. Now I'm going to go get the pictures that I'm going to put in here and they're right here in my links folder and I'm actually going to pick up more than I need. Uh, here's one that I know I don't want so I'm going to control click to take it out of the mix but I think I have more pictures than I have places to put them so what am I going to do? When I click open and I come in You'll notice that it says 8. You might have to look really close, but there's a little number 8 in the upper left hand corner. That's how many images I'm carrying around, but I have 6 frames. And I'm not sure which picture I want to place first, so again I can use my arrow keys and I can kind of wiggle my mouse. Sometimes you have to do that. If they're big images, sometimes you have to wiggle because it has to grow those little thumbnails. And you can see that I have multiple images here and I can sort of page through them and see which ones I want to place. I'll put this one here this next one I don't think I really want so I'll press my escape key and that sort of throws it out of the mix and then I'll place the next image and I think that's it I'll just keep on going keep on going and I have one left over down here but I didn't make a frame for it that's okay I can click and drag and make a frame on the fly and notice where my cursor is and the frame it's going to make it always keeps the same proportion as the image itself now in this case we're seeing the entirety of the image it has grown a frame on the fly, so don't be misled, it is in a frame. So a couple of these, they're pretty good, but I want to reposition them. So several ways I can talk to the graphic. I can get my white arrow and I can click inside and you see this pale blue outline that tells me I'm talking to the image, not the frame. I'm just going to use my arrow key and just scoot him down. Now I can do this without switching. I can get my black arrow and I can click on a frame and then double click and the same effect. Now there's a little icon that you may be seeing on your screen that I've turned off so let me turn it back on. I'll go to view extras show content grabber and I know I did that kind of fast. I'm going to come back and show you where that comes from. But that's this little uh, double circle. If you'd ever looked through uh, a camera lens before we had all digital cameras you'd see this 
this sort of view, it's called a viewfinder. InDesign calls it the content grabber and the idea is that they wanted to make it easier for you to grab images. So here if I want to move her down I actually don't have to switch tools. I can just click on that. You can see that blue outline that says you're talking to the image and then I can move her down. And then when I'm done I can just click away. I will give you a caution about the content grabber, especially in a small frame. You run the risk of intending to move the frame, but you grab the image instead and reposition it, and that's not what you want. So my tendency is to turn this off. It's up to you if you want to leave it on, but if you want to turn it off and it's on by default, you just do this. Go to View, down to Extras, the content grabber is an extra, View, Extras, and then choose Hide Content Grabber. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go back to that switching tools. You don't have to use the white arrow. There's an easier way to do this. For example, on this image, if I want to move them up, I just click once with the black arrow to select the frame, double click, and now I have the image and I can grab it and move it. I double click again and I'm back to talking to the frame. This is my favorite way because it's very easy, it's very efficient, and it avoids some of the dangers that you might encounter with that uh, content grabber tool.